want to share something with you. I want you just to be seated for a short while in his presence. It's important that we understand the things that set us back. See, God says we are to worship in spirit and in truth. And David said, I desire truth in the inward parts. And I want you to know that there are times when there's something that is just blocking. Have you ever felt that way? Like you want to go deep on your stock, but you're not sure where you're stuck and why you're stuck. And one of the areas that we are affected by in the deep and inward parts of our being. And we have been teaching on this the last couple of weeks. We shared a little earlier on marine spirits that are sexual and they hinder us and affect our mind. But one of the things that we need to remember is that there are spirits of rejection that can destroy us because it hits at the root of who we are in Christ because it's the opposite of acceptance when you know who you are and whose you are when you face the challenges of life and you face the things that hinder you you do so with a posture of I know who I am and whose I am and even if he may slay me I will serve the Lord Jesus Christ and even if I'm struggling with something I know who I am see when you don't know who you are and when you have allowed yourself to believe the lies that were said to you over the years so that you are now cursing your own self by calling yourself names or the way you describe yourself you will find that as much as you try to receive from the Lord the wall of false identity that is rejection blocks and I want you to know that Evil spirits cannot just enter your life like that. Remember, the Holy Spirit fills your spirit man. But there may be sin that we've exposed ourselves to and they come in. So these de devils, they can't just enter like that. They must have an open door. The act of rejection someone rejecting you saying something negative letting you down creates a wound that wound is an open door for a demon of rejection to enter they live in hoods they live in wounds you say well you mean a demon might be in my heart, my emotions. Listen, y'all. Do you see bacteria with your own eye? You have to look under a microscope. But they're there, I assure you. If you put your finger under a microscope, no matter how much hand sanitizer you put on, there's bacteria, just these creepy, crawly things. You don't know they're there, but they're there. We don't know all the time. The demons are there they hide some of them make themselves known and from the time they make themselves known you're supposed to make sure you don't stay getting comfortable with them and sometimes it's a little bit more complicated because they're networking they've been there either through generational iniquity or through trauma and things that we've been involved in 
But the fact is, a wound allows a demon of rejection to enter. And rejection can begin as early as conception in the womb. I want you to know this. Satan has a strategy. As soon as a baby, before the baby is born, he has a strategy to destroy that child. To cause them to walk in a different destiny. He tries to take advantage of negative conditions in a person's life from the very beginning. That's why we tell, we tell those parents who want to conceive, even before they conceive, we pray for your womb. We pray for you. We tell you come for prayer. We teach you how to pray for that womb before you conceive. And from the time you conceive, we teach you how to strategically pray using the word of God for that baby in the womb. But you need to understand many people didn't know these things. And some of us are products of wombs that is quite possible. Our parents may not have always, some always been that thrilled if we were a boy, if we were a girl, if we were there at all. And some were, some were not. We don't have to go back and do a, a search. But you will always know someone who suffers from rejection. We started talking about it. There are certain characteristics. I'm not going to go back there at this point. I just need to say, you will know. Nothing you could do could cause you to walk in the acceptance that Christ said he has accepted you everything someone says to you is a, is a cause for you to be, be, believe that you're not good enough I want to say this the very first opportunity the enemy takes advantage of is at conception through generational inheritance Adam sinned and we are experiencing the effects of Adam's sin. So let me just, without saying much more, generational iniquity can affect, affect me. But through the blood, I don't have to sow what I didn't reap. I don't have to reap what I didn't sow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Through the blood, I don't have to reap what I didn't sow. But we need to understand, sin comes down from Adam. So grandpa and great grandpa, there's stuff there that could be affecting me. And Satan wants to start his destruction from in the womb. So evil spirits of rejection that have been in the family for a long time will find an easy way to access at conception. So it's not simply if our parents had a problem with us in the womb. They themselves may be struggling with rejection or may have struggled and it will want to affect the baby in the womb and so I want us to know that evil spirits of rejection that have been in the family for a long time will find it very easy to access a person at conception and they are some of the stronger they are stronger ones they are stronger ones and weaker ones so a child in the womb you know this is a, is 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 aware of things, aware of sound, etc. And unborn children are aware of positive and negative reactions, though they may not be able to totally process the way we do. So if your parents were unhappy in their marriage, or were fighting, or as is the case of some, you know, sometimes, like I know someone, and he is adopted, but he's also the product of rape. So there's a double rejection there. And you will find that that spirit of rejection would have been planted from birth. But it is not something 
that we have to lose sleep over, but it is something that will cause us to lose sleep if we do not seek healing and deliverance. If we are living our lives simply, always being offended if somebody doesn't say that they like us, getting upset if we're not noticed, somebody says something and we add an on. In fact, we're not even adding on now. Thoughts in our mind are telling us the extra conversation that the person is saying to you when the person hasn't said it. That's how real it gets with some people. And because of lies that we've been told, and I say lies because you are who God says you are. You are who God says you are. You have to know who he says you are. But because of situations growing up, we may have been told things that we believe about ourselves and that becomes our reality. So we cannot even receive what God is saying. That's a serious problem, you all, and you have to get help for it. Because what you are doing is you are living on the foundation of another gospel. You are saying, I'm following the Jesus of the Bible, but you're not accepting what the Jesus of the Bible says about you. You cannot be an a la carte Christian. Do not tell me I'm doing everything, but if I'm rejected, and if I'm always, I'm always feeling rejected, I'm always, listen to me, you better get a list of who you are in Christ and begin to meditate on it because you cannot go year after year after year saying, you know, is rejection. Listen to me. The gospel of Satan includes the lies of who Satan says you are. So if you're living your life always processing who Satan says you are, then you are following another Jesus. That's not Jesus. Are you hearing me? You know why I'm saying this? Because we find it easy to become comfortable with respectable sins of rejection. Jesus may have been rejected, but he never accepted rejection. He knew he was accepted. He was rejected of all men. He did not accept rejection. Are you hearing me? We are not called to accept rejection. When we accept rejection and we do not get help to deal with rejection, we are sinning. Now you're going to say that's huge. What? If somebody rejects me, I'm sinning. You are accepting who they say you are and you've got to get help for healing and deliverance so that when they say these things you're not gonna feel those arrows mash you up like how it would mash you up when you believe feel act on because that's what we do we believe the lie we feel it in our emotions and we act on it we start behaving like who they say we are i'm not good enough i'll never be good enough your business will mash up because you will be running your business the way people say you are and not who god says you are since it is time that we realize that sin there's many sins including rejecting who God says we are. You say, well, I don't reject it, but you're not accepting it. If you don't accept, you reject. And you've got to get help. Don't just let it be. That's how it's been. Don't settle for it. Wrestle. Say, God, you didn't say this about me. These wounds that are there, I want healing for. I want you to understand that when a child feels and perceives it begins from in the womb these feelings and perceptions mold their attitude and acceptance of themselves an unborn child can deal with fear trauma unrest rejection sadness anxiety anger so therefore you can affect a, an unborn child before it's born. When David said he was born in iniquity, he understood what that meant from in the womb where he was conceived. And need us to understand that this is not something that only applies in our head because it is ruining many lives. The church of Jesus Christ 
spend so much time phrasing a statement before they could tell somebody in case they get upset. Saints, people fall out. They're sensitive. You can't tell them anything. You don't know how they're taking it. That has to stop and it can only stop as you recognize it's because we are operating with rejection false identity as our identity when you have to be thinking once twice three times before you say something to someone a child of God supposed to know who they are and whose they are so when you speak to them I'm not telling you if you don't care and you say what you want we're not we're talking about listen to me simple sentences you have to construct and reconstruct because you don't know if the verb falls after the noun in the way it's not supposed to somebody will take it as you don't like me since you have no idea pastors just have to learn the english language forward backward sideways all kind of ways we have to stop this and we do it to our friends you don't get a like on Facebook you have a whole crisis as a matter of fact you say you're not on Facebook for followers but you're checking these are things God wants to heal us from because here's the thing as we answer the call you've got to set aside those things God wants to harden you to difficulty. Those of you that are coming for appointments for rejection, re-listen to these messages. Don't come to me until you listen to each of them about twice because I can't repeat myself anymore. You want deliverance from a strong man. That rejection is a strong man. It has armor. You need to understand to overcome something you've got to understand sometimes what's the root where it came from you've got to understand who you are in Christ I want you to know it could be an unwanted pregnancy it could be a child conceived out of wedlock you may not intend to reject that child nobody said the child is, is, is rejected however Society has this kind of, we are not telling people to go and have children out of wedlock, but if a person conceives, God wants that child. In spite of the fact, ideally, it ought to be in marriage, the fact is, that child is made in the image and likeness of God. But there may be comments made or feelings made. Maybe even the first time the mother realized that she was pregnant, Maybe if it only lasts for one hour. Rejection. Attempted abortion. Certain accidents and traumas that take place during pregnancy. Drug or alcohol dependency. Or separation or divorce of parents. Even while the mother might have been pregnant. Let alone when the mother has a child. And there's lots of other examples that are given and I don't want to spend too much time there. Parents not holding the baby and showing love. Not giving the child a name. Being disappointed at the sex of the child. It's rejection. The mother not bonding. Sometimes a child may have a prolonged illness, etc. Favoritism. As I said, children given up for adoption. Verbal abuse. Physical abuse. Sexual abuse. These are things that affect children. Harsh disciplines. I want us to know that abuse and rejection when I say they go hand in hand, it's very frequent that we don't understand how abuse creates devastating rejection in a person. 
So whether it's physical, verbal, or sexual, abuse has deep negative effects on a person. People are easily put down by words. Some people feel if it's not physical abuse, then they could cope. But everybody is not the same. And this is why it's not that you have to go and learn the English language to, to, to reconstruct sentences for people. You can't go to the other extreme and you don't care what you say and how you say it. It's not good enough to bully people with words. You may have a friend who doesn't have a problem with that. There are people that have relationships where they are not like, I didn't take that on or anything. But that does not mean the way you approach that person, you can with another person. And a lot of times, I don't know if you realize, Trinidadians have been raised in a very kind of abusive kind of culture in terms of verbally. We don't know how to speak to children. I don't know about you, maybe it has changed now, but when I went to school, that was verbal abuse hell. Teachers felt they could treat you how they want, tell you how they want. I hated school. Listen, I tell my children, they know that all the time. From the time they were going to school, I was telling them I didn't like school. I was glad when I graduated at the age of 18. School, I was, I was, I was bright, but I didn't like the way you were treated because you're a student, you're a child, you understand what I'm saying? And I also grew up in a home with verbal abuse. So you need to know words can cut, but don't go to the next extreme where it's your belief about yourself that you are hearing and not the words that somebody spoke to you. Somebody could talk nice and you still hearing that you are terrible because you believe that about yourself. I want you to know that sexual abuse is very damaging and it causes an opening for demonic activity and deep emotional wounds. So you have the verbal and you have the sexual. And there's deep guilt and distrust and feelings of betrayal and hatred and confusion. So if a child is sexually violated repeatedly before the age of seven, there is multiple fragmentation of the mind that takes place to cope with the pain their mind I'm not going to try to explain it to you except to say they've learned various ways to cope and they begin to have different personalities that help them to cope because at the end of the day it's so traumatic so when a child like that grows up and comes to church, how do you help them? Do you say that the church can't help you? You have to be, you have to be whole in your mind to get help. God shed his blood and died for us. And there are many broken, many broken. The churches are called to help because demons have come into the minds of many before they even got saved. So as we preach the word and as we sit with people and we disciple them, we recognize, yes, the psychologists will have their role, but the churches are too quick to send people to the psychologists and don't do their part. So that the mind, the will, the emotions, the mind is renewed. God says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If your mind has been splintered because there are several traumas that you went through, God says your mind can be renewed. And I'm touching on this because I need you to understand that rejection in whatever form, especially if it's done by a parent, causes deep trauma. They will repress that abuse and hide it, but that door has been opened wide to rejection. 
parents who know that they are verbally abusing and physically abusing their children need to stop and get help. And stop saying, I know. Because those children, years later, are going to have serious issues that God can heal. But I'm speaking, and there are those who will come and listen to this message later, to Christian parents, when you know something is wrong, just like we spoke about earlier today, don't stop until you are set free of what you are doing to propagate abuse. We live in a country that thinks it's okay for abuse to go on from day to day. But we're talking here of rejection. That is not simply I'm feeling bad because somebody doesn't like me. It's a, it's a wound that literally destroys people. So you are little and you grow up to be bigger. And then you're an adult and your mind is fragmented. You literally have, in a simple way, conversations going on in your head by different things. That's because your mind is fragmented. And deep rejection propagates that. It's not something to simply just say, well, you know, I'll get over it. Some don't. That's why they can't receive the gospel. Because they can't receive what God is saying about them. They are accepted. Because they've heard, either by actions or words, who they are not. And if parents are the chief ones to do that, a primary caregiver does the most damage. And that's why children who are molested by people that they know, it's very traumatic for them. Because you trust, and then that trust is violated. I want you to understand that what goes hand in hand, and I want to have time to pray for you today before we close. So I'm just giving you a little bit. You will notice if you are to suffer from deep rejection, there will be rebellion. Somebody tell you something? It irks you. To be able to obey is the total opposite you want to do. This is the fruit that rejection bears. It's a form of protecting yourself. You so don't want to be put down. You take in front and you go to the other extreme. And the easiest way is to object before you even process the question. Rebellion is one of the main fruits. Self-rejection is another. You have believed the lies that have been told and you start to reject yourself now. Since if you take a baby and you, it's born and you leave it by itself and you reject it, it's not going to thrive. It needs to have that love. Could you understand if you yourself rejecting yourself? You're dying from inside. Because you believe lies, you are now thinking and speaking those lies over yourself. You are killing yourself from the inside. Satan has found a way to cause you to curse yourself. Self-rejection is worse than other kinds of rejection. God is saying yes, I say no. Somebody saying something positive, before you even speak it, you're thinking it. The negative. This goes on. Because the strongholds, the repeated patterns that have been spoken over you, you are now accepting. So you are rejecting yourself. From the inside, you're dying. And there's self-protection. And that's where the rebellion is linked. To protect yourself, you don't get close to people. If they come too close, you kind of question. You're not, too, you're not too quick to trust. And you will not allow people too close. And if their words are even requesting you to agree to something, particularly if you've been victims of abuse, 
instantly. Don't tell me what to do. That's your modus operandi. And rebellion is an aggressive reaction and it will manifest itself, as I said, in opposition, in stubbornness, in defiance. So if you have a child that's defiant and stubborn, sit back and ask yourself, has that child been experiencing rejection growing up? Because I need you to know that if you want the defiance to stop, we've got to deal with the rejection. Gone are the days where we want the child to just behave the way they're supposed to, but we don't want to do the work and the part that maybe we have contributed to how the child is. So you will find that the rebellious person is sometimes can get out of control, depending. Some, and there are those who would have testified in this church, their life was out of control until Jesus reined them in. They went into every possible nook and cranny where life was. But there are people that are full of anger, hate, pride, arrogance, and stubbornness. And if they don't show it outwardly, they, it's inside. They say all the right things, but li literally, they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't experience a genuine love for people. It's not that they don't want to love people, but this is the fruit of that spirit. That's a false identity. That's not who you are. And that's what leads to aggression. That's what leads to people who become aggressive physically. They most likely have a history of deep rejection growing up. And they are people that are now rebellious, out of control. I want you to know, and you'll find that they will run to alcohol and drugs as much as possible in order to numb a lot of what they experience. Self-rejected people don't like themselves. They feel as if something is seriously wrong with them. They are very insecure. They are lonely, they are isolated, they are intimidated. They want to love but can't love the way they want to. They're self-hatred. And this, in some people, can lead even to self-harm and suicide. And they deal with voices of rejection that can create a false personality especially if they tend to be inwardly isolated. I'm letting you know, literally, they will hear voices. These are not mad people. Jesus heard voices in the desert. Satan was speaking. This is what takes place in some people's heads. But they will believe that that's them. So they have a false personality created. And they're usually deeply wounded people. And they believe in the true and living God. However, those who are around them need to take extra time to help them. Because you can't, a, a person as that rejected, where self-protection is, they don't get close. Saints, I want to say something. Us in the church need to start looking at the other person who needs help. There are too many of us who are still dealing with our bondage, so we don't have time for the other person. When we stay back for hospitality after church, your intention ought to be to look for someone who Nobody is talking to and go to them. It's not simply about you talking to your friend. There are people who do not know even how to connect because they're so accustomed. Even rejecting their own self or simply just not accustomed. COVID has done that to a lot of people. And I want you to know that it's not about i got to look for my friend and hang out. That's okay, but you got to look around and see somebody 
that isn't talking to anybody that maybe you never spoke to and intentionally get to know that person there are a lot of people with self-protection because there's a fear of being rejected so what they will do is they will build walls around their heart to prevent others from getting too close to them and they will deal with hard-heartedness numbness and shut down their emotions when your emotions are shut down they're numb this is in the word of god because when you talk about rejected when you talk about accepted you need to understand how satan operates he goes into the emotions and he numbs the emotions particularly if you have had rejection over and over there are walls that go up i want you to know that many will isolate themselves from those who love them the most because there is a spirit that convinces them that they cannot be loved and accepted if you are thinking that about yourself it is time for you to choose to follow the jesus of the bible and not satan because you have to tell yourself i have to do something about this it's not okay to tell yourself i've been like that for so long i don't find that i am anything good enough you find yourself saying that you have to stop because you are rejecting what the king of kings and the lord of lords has done on the cross for you because you are passing on what was passed on to you but you need to stop now and you need to say i am not accepting this i might not feel it but i know it goes against what god's word says too many of us our feelings we must feel it no sometimes our emotions have been satan's playground and therefore we are unable to even feel anything or sometimes we feel what was spoken to us and it's still there because a devil has lodged himself in our emotions but it's not what god's word says so you have to reject it Many become distrusting of others and have a difficult time giving and receiving love. If you cannot receive love from others, you need help. You cannot stay like that. It is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is not the call. If you want to follow Jesus, then you want to follow him. He was always vulnerable. Even when he was rejected by people, he still gave love. He still allowed people to say, did he not go to Peter? Do you love me? You following Jesus of the Bible? Have you said to someone, do you love me? Or have you said it and you know the answer already? So if they say yes, you will know. Saints, listen, we want to reach people for Christ please ask God to sort us out first please I'm not saying you can't go out there and evangelize but but the, the unsaved are looking on we are functioning like jigsaw pieces that not fit in relationships that suffer from these walls walls of defense Walls of defense feel like concrete. When you're ministering to somebody with a wall of defense, it's like you're hitting a brick wall. And then they think, well, Jesus don't love me. It's not that. What are the lies you're believing that you need help with? Because you can't continue that way. So people who have self-protected have made inner vows that need to be broken. And we've taught on inner vows before. In a vow, say, I will never. An in a vow, a self-directed promise that came out of difficulty and pain. We comfort ourselves with inner vows just in case we get rejected again. We'll say, I'll never let anybody hurt me again. I'll never let anyone get close enough to hurt me again. I will never be like my parents. We may not mean it to be bad, but we are trying to comfort ourselves in a way that is against, it's the opposite of surrendering to Jesus. What if you're hurt again? What if somebody lets you down? Surrender means you're willing, 
because of Jesus' promises to you, you will be vulnerable. Through Christ, you will be able to face the rejection. You need to be healed of the pain, but you cannot live life with walls in case I get hurt or I get rejected. I want us to understand here, last but not least, I wanted to share this before I begin to pray. I want us to know that the spiritual battle against rejection is, is won or lost in the mind and spoken through your mouth. You have to start saying what God says even when you don't feel it. Even, and belief is not feeling it, so I believe it. Belief is, I choose to believe it because God said it. Belief is not a feeling. Belief is a choice that you then act on. Speak it. Don't wait to feel it. We are living in the feely, feely. Have nothing to do with feelings. You've got to know, what did God say? I believe because God says it. I may not feel it, but I will speak it because God said it, so I will speak it. That's belief. And it's important that we not remain enslaved souls to Satan because of rejection. Satan works in, in our mind. And he uses the spirit of doubt to stop you from dealing with a deception like rejection. And he will win if you fail to drive those thoughts out of your mind and replace them with faith and the word of God. You can win the battle and you will win it by understanding that you must use what God says about you. That's the sword. Nothing to do with feeling it. So that's the first thing you have to do. And then you must recognize that if you have allowed these thoughts for long enough, there are demons that live there. So sometimes you're minding your business and then you're hearing a thought that you know you were watching the pot of kalaloo on the stove and you're hearing something like, you think you could cook? You're a dumb cook. And the thought comes like that. You are incapable of cooking the kalaloo and having a conversation in your head at the same time. But the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And you've got to recognize when it's him. Take every thought captive. And if that thought is something that keeps coming over and over, then you've got to start to write these thoughts down. And you've got to go back and say, what did my father say about me? You cannot deal with this by just... Well, I just will, wouldn't take it on because it comes like a flood. It bombards your mind. The spirit of rejection will use demons that work with your emotions. So you could explode with anger, bitterness, hatred, and they will create battles. Fighting against, let me tell you what your battle will be every day of your life. Supposed injustices and supposed pain. Perceived injustices, perceived pain. Not that they will go by. That somebody will talk to you and you're perceiving that they don't like you or, they, or there's pain. And at the end of the day, the spirit of rejection hides behind these things. And what happens? Fans your emotions. Our emotions are to be submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not to live by our emotions. So when you come and you say you want deliverance from rejection, you need to know it's not about demons. You think it's about demons. It's really about being discipled to understand what is the root of this thing, to take the word of God 
and begin to declare it why because it's truth and as you know the truth the truth will set you free yes the demons will leave but it's not about simply come come out in Jesus name because seven more wicked will come back I want you to know that rebellion and rejection these two principalities form the core of the root of the spirit of fear if we don't deal with rebellion and rejection and fear what will happen is you will not get rid of the fruit of rejection fear operates because you're afraid of being rejected you're afraid of being hurt fear once fear comes in there's other fears that come in as well so you're dealing with rebellion you're dealing with uh, fear and I need you to know the spiritual consequences of all of this for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus and what happens is uh, we begin to die from inside we begin to experience spiritual death I want to say to you that just as I told you you know their root causes some of them may apply to you coming through the family line a mother's womb how you were born baby not be bonded to the mother being adopted etc etc but what comes with rejection sometimes because it's a powerful just now I'm gonna pray for you I'm gonna wrap up I need to say this to you a powerful evil spirit that binds and captures a person and what happens is it causes that person to accept rejection in all areas of their life and you will be placed follow me carefully let me say this again y'all please really important rejection is a powerful evil spirit that binds and captures a person and causes them to accept failure in all areas of their life as a result it will place them in a cage are you hearing me a cage of isolation self-defeat self-hate and confusion and when self-rejection is in the cage as well you're rejecting yourself you're dying from the inside depression comes out of rejection rejection will always come first and then depression and then sickness and all kinds of things demons will work behind depression because when someone is depressed they feel hopeless and so it begins to invade every aspect of your life and I need to say to you yes there may be a physical reason or chemical reason for depression but even those people who have to take meds for depression after a while the meds would help I'm here to let you know if you are experiencing that you are dealing with a root of rejection a strong man of rejection that needs to be dealt with and it pervades your life so you feel that you are caged and what happens is you will always magnify problems problems will be magnified and demons will cause you to exaggerate the problem because you will they want you to get to the place where you will never think that Jesus could solve it you're reaching hopelessness now so I want to say to you as I pray for you, remember, when fear comes in, fear is the gatekeeper that opens the door to a lot of other spirits. And the spirit of bondage, the caged feeling is because all aspects of your life, rejection is invading and rejection is going to result in hopelessness the more you begin to, to reject yourself anything good about yourself 
when you are accepting lies that have been spoken into your mind self-rejection is bringing in in the core of your being spiritual death and it will be like you are stuck and you can't come out saints all of this is to do with rejection so because you know what I'm telling you is rejection you will not give up you may not know where to start but as you continue to get discipled what you will find is that some things in some areas are more obvious some people it's one area more than another area but if there's anything I've said here today is striking you many times through the word and through prayer you can come out but if you are not and you are stuck, you need, to, you need to have a combination of coming into his presence, literally. And I want to say this to some of you, become selfish when you come to Tarion. Become selfish. When you come to Tarion, you and God, get desperate. Become selfish. Because even though Tarion is a service like their Sunday service, there is a time that you want to be in his presence. You want to kneel down. You want to lie down. You want to sit down. You don't know what to do with yourself. But you don't want nobody to keep your back. You heard what Calvo's tell me? You don't want to move. Become selfish. Because there are too many of us. Because we love people. We never take enough time. Just us and God to have him begin to deal with some things. The hardest thing is for a mother with children to become selfish, but God will make a way for those mothers because they have little ones. But I'm speaking here to the rest of you because day in, day in and day out, night and day, night and day, we are walking around with these bondages. We've got to get desperate, one. And two, we spoke earlier about unclean spirits. Today, we are saying rejection, rebellion, self-protection self-rejection all those things come together it's part of the armor of rejection it's different parts of what rejection is and then brings out behaviors in us but what the enemy is doing is wanting us to be so isolated that while we are by ourselves, he's speaking to us his lies it's time to stop listening to those lies because you are following another entity. It's not Jesus. Because you are believing lies. When you believe lies, when you believe what is not truth, then you are believing lie. I'm saying it as blatantly as I can. Be careful that you are not following another gospel. The gospel of Satan. Don't settle for this thing. This thing is deadly. God wants you to walk in your destiny sometimes as I close sometimes we feel that it, it's okay I'm a little victim and poor me and I feel so and this one reject me listen to me shake off and tell yourself you cannot continue to live this way you can if you live accepting rejection you know I'm so wounded tomorrow again you're wounded the day after you're wounded how long are you going to live with these wounds? How long are you going to continue to listen to what the devil is saying to you through those wounds? Not one day more am I going to do this. I need help. Because you are not following truth. And if you don't follow truth, you're following lie. It's another way to get you into hell. You know why? Because there's some people it gets so bad. So bad and so hopeless. They backslide and they turn away. So that's why I'm saying it.